Welcome to the Fox One Corp series of training videos. I'm Dave Springfort. Please visit me online at www.foxonecorp.com for all your glider supplies. In this video, I want to take a look at the weight and balance function in version 8 of the uh, LX Flight Computer firmware. This was first introduced in 2020. We can use our LX computer to verify our CG position before flight, but to do that, there's a bunch of setup that needs to be done. On this page, you can see it tells us there's not enough data. So what that means is we need to go in and enter all the aircraft specific data so that the computer can accurately calculate the center of gravity position for that specific airplane. So to do that, we're going to close this. We're going to go back to our setup menu. And within the setup menu, we want to go to this polar and glider menu item. On here, we can see, and this is a bit of a change from earlier version 7 and, and previous firmware, the aircraft polars are now stored separately from the profile. They're now stored in a, a slightly different format and section to be able to use the weight and balance. We can have up to three aircraft loaded here. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this for the Arcus 20, the new Arcus, and so we're going to create a new aircraft. So the first thing is we'll click on new down here and I don't want to copy the other glider and I don't want to use the polar from the active so we're going to go down here and we're going to select the Arcus T once we've done that it tells us or warns us we're going to overwrite everything so that's fine we're going to say okay so now we can see that we have three gliders and what I want to do now is edit the Arcus T so I click on edit and it first takes us to a page that shows us all the polar information. One thing that's important here, and a few people have asked me about this, is the reference weight. This reference weight is the weight at which the polar was calculated. It's going to be different from your empty weight. It's going to be different from your flying weight. Do not change this value. If you change it, it'll change your polar and you'll no longer have accurate glide information. So never adjust that reference weight. Leave it as is. So what we really want to do here is we want to start looking at the weight and balance. We're going to go here and click on weight and balance. First thing is there's a bunch of information we need to enter from the aircraft. So three sources of information that we need. We need the most recent weight and balance report for the aircraft. We need the maintenance manual for the aircraft and we need the flight manual from the aircraft. With those three documents, we'll be able to source all the information we need to complete this section of weight and balance. So the first thing, let's go to our factory weight and balance. Factory weight and balance, we can see the registration of the aircraft is given at the top, verifying that's the correct one. And two pieces of information we need are we, is we need the arm and the mass for the empty aircraft. We can see here, mass of 508.9. 508.91 and we have an arm of 550.57 for this aircraft so we're going to round that to 551 and we're going to round the weight up to uh, 509 so the arm we're going to set that to 551 and the mass we're going to set that to 510 with simulator i'm able to use the keyboard to enter these numbers more quickly if you're on the actual device, you'd be down here on the uh, lower knobs, spinning clockwise to increment, counterclockwise to decrement. And if you use the lower left-hand knob, now you'll get larger jumps of 20 kilograms instead of one kilogram. We've entered all that information. I'm just gonna keep using the mouse and clicking instead of using the LX controls here. So empty aircraft, and something that's not intuitively obvious is that there's more information than just empty aircraft here. So if I go back up here, if I edit this first field, and then I start turning this knob, I get various other parameters that I can enter. In this field, we first had empty weight, now we need pilot and parachute. So the arm, that we need to get from our maintenance manual. So we have the maintenance manual over here for the Arcus 20. And what we want to do is find the section that has all of the weight and balance information. All maintenance manuals, all the CAG information is in uh, section six. So we can see section six, determination, uh, CG determination and payload. 
and so we need to get into section six of the manual. I'm going to jump straight to the page here, and what we have is in this section six, the arms for all of the items in the aircraft of concern. So right now we're interested in the uh, pilot. So there's pilot front seat and it's at 1468 millimeters forward of the datum. One thing that I should mention here is that within the units dialog, so we're just gonna back out of here and close this. Whenever we change the uh, empty aircraft weight, we're gonna get this warning to verify that we've actually selected the most current information. So we're gonna confirm that. So we go back to our uh, setup menu and within units, CG input mode. This is an important one for us. Under CG input mode, we have an option of millimeters, inches, kilogram meters, which is a, a moment. I think Yonkers uses the moment kilogram meter instead of giving us the arms, but Schleicher and Champhurth will provide the information in millimeters. So we're gonna put CG input mode to millimeters for the Champhurth that we're working on. So we'll save that, close, and we'll go back here, and we'll go back to editing our Arcus into our weight and balance, edit this field, and back to pilot and parachute. So the arm, we put in the aircraft arm as 551, and we put that as a positive. So everything behind the datum is a positive value, and everything forward of the datum is going to be a negative value. So we're going to have to put in minus 2153 in this case. So we're just going to adjust this to our 2153. The mass we can leave blank for now. We can adjust that before flight. And the limit, that's the seat limit for the Arcus. It's 115 kilograms per seat. So we'll set that to 115. Now we'll go back up here and we'll go down one more again, you'd use the lower right hand knob here, rotate it clockwise, and we get co pilot and parachute. So, the arm for the co pilot, we're going to uh, look here pilot rear seat, 308 forward. So, we need a minus 308 here. And the seat limit is once again 115 kilograms. Back up to the top, water ballast main, that's your main wing tanks. So our water ballast wings is 17 millimeters forward, so minus 17. There's our minus 17. And the limit, 185 liters or kilograms for the Arcus. Once again, back to the top, water ballast tips. We don't have tip tanks on the Arcus, so we'll leave that empty. Expendable tail tank. So that's our water ballast in the fin. It's 5292 millimeters aft of the datum, so that's going to be a positive value of 5292. Put that in here, 5292, and the most we can put in the Arcus is 11 liters in the tail. So there's our 11. Back up to the top, non expendable tail tank. Planes like the JS3, DG505, for example. They have a tail tank that you can fill before flight that is solely for balancing the cockpit load and it's not dumped when the wing tanks are dumped. So that's where you would put this information that once you open the dump valve, if you have the LX set to measure the amount of time, it will not dump this water from the computer and it'll keep your CG. So that one we don't have in an Arcus, we'll leave that empty. Fuel tank auxiliary, typically wing tanks, fuel tank main. That one we do have, so fuel tank in the fuselage, 492 millimeters aft, so that's a positive, and it will hold 15.9 liters, but we don't have the option of decimals here, so we're just going to put that to 16 liters as the maximum we can put in. Then, user defined. This one I'm going to use for the pilot trim weights. So under the instrument panel, we can put some lead weights for uh, putting light pilots in the front seat. And so that's this one here, trim ballast under front instrument panel at a minus 2153. 
And this one we can label so we know what it is. And so we're going to call this trim. Weights. And I'm just going to put a note here that each of these are 3.7 kilograms. So that means when we enter a mass before flight, we can only put increments of 3.7 for the one, two, or three trim weights that we've used. I'm going to say OK here, and then back up to the top. And if we try and scroll down from user defined, there are no more items. If we scroll up, we can go back through all the items we've already entered, and we can see what we have. So that's entering all the basic data for the aircraft that will now allow it to calculate the CG position. The next thing we need to do is we need to start going in here and drawing the flight envelope. So that's what this bottom section is. To get the flight envelope, we need the CG limits, and that comes from the flight manual. So we're going to pop over here to our flight manual. All of this information is going to be in the limits section and that's section two of your flight manual. So we can see in here limitations in section two to the table of contents for section two and we can see section 2.7 is our center of gravity. That's the page that we want. And here things such as what's the weighing attitude, 4.5 to 100 block on the fuselage, what's the datum. But what we want in this case is we want our maximum forward and our maximum rearward CG position. For us, we have power plant installed. So we want that 75 for the forward, and we want that 290 for the rearward CG position. So those are the numbers we're going to put into the LX. Other thing, I'm going to increase this, the Arcus 20 has an increased max takeoff weight of 850 kilograms compared to the older models of Arcus. So we're going to bump that up to 850. For the minimum, we said the plane is 510 kilograms here. And if we have two 80 kilogram pilots, that's uh, 160. So that would take us up to about 670 as our lowest possible flying weight. So I'm going to drop this 700 down to 660 just so I have some room at the bottom of the graph. So forward limit at 850 kilograms we want that to be 75 millimeters. The aft limit we want that to be at 290. Then we have the same limits at uh, minimum weight and this one out to 290. So that white box that we're drawing now that's our flight envelope intermediate point here. This allows us to have an inflection point on the front curve. So let's say, for example, I put in uh, oh, somewhere at 760. This CG limit moves aft from the 75 to 100, the 850, and we'd have to move that back a little bit too. So we can see that we can form a different shape by using that intermediate point. The Arcus doesn't have that. Everything's at 75. Scroll down to the bottom of the page here. We have a bunch more fields that we can complete, and we have a caution zone, and we have an optimal zone. So the caution zone, CG position you don't want to be in, and we can color it with yellow on the graph. For the Arcus, there really isn't a caution zone, but I'm going to set it up so it shows us a caution zone if we get to 90% and further back. So from 90% to 100% aft, I'm going to set up a caution zone. Just as a reminder, we probably don't want to be that far back. So again, we're going to bump this up to 850, and 90% is going to take us to 269, and the rear of the caution zone is going to be at 100% at 290, and that stays the same regardless of weight. We're going to keep our 269 here and our 290. And you can see our yellow zone starting to be drawn. So there's from 90% to 100% aft. 
showing us we probably don't want to be there in the yellow. Then, for our optimal, for the Arcus, about 75% is optimal. So I'm going to set up an optimal zone that runs from 70 to 80%. So as long as we're in that 70 to 80% range, we're probably in a pretty good spot. So again, we're going to increase this to 850, and 70% occurs at 226, and 80% occurs at 247. Reduce this to our same 660 and put in the same numbers, 226 to 247. And now we can see a green zone on the graph. So the green is the optimal. That's where we'd like to have our CG for best performance. The yellow is, uh, we're starting to get a little bit too far aft. We probably don't want to be there. So that's all the information we need to put in to set up the weight and balance. The next part or the next step is always before each flight, you want to take a look at what's your actual position based on the current load. So we're going to close this. And now the pre-flight check is in the setup menu. We go to this third menu item, weight and balance. Click on that and we start to see the weight and balance. What I've done wrong here is I did not select the Arcus as the active glider. It still shows us an ASG29, so we're going to go back to Polar and Glider. We're going to scroll down to the Arcus T, make that the active glider, close, and now we're going to go back to weight and balance and we can see the Arcus. So on our pre-flight weight and balance, things that we want to verify, we want to verify that our pilot weight our co-pilot weight are set properly. We want to put in our wing ballast if we're going to carry any. Put in our actual fuel load and our actual tail tank load. And if we're going to put any trim weights in. Again, I put the 3.7 kilograms in the label so that we know what they weigh. And that way we can uh, increment in values of 3.7. With this, what it tells us is that with the water, and in this case, because we put water in the tail, it's giving us a wet CG location. So it's at 88%, which we can see is the blue dot. If we dump all the water ballast from the tail, we'll be at the dry position at 64%, which is going to leave us at this green dot. If, for example, we put wing ballast in, we can see the blue dot is moving up indicating our increase in weight and it's also moving forward because the water ballast is ahead of the CG. So our seven, if we want to get back to our 75-ish percent, we would need to increment this up to about eight. One thing that you want to verify is that these values are coming out accurately, making sure we didn't make any mistakes when we entered data in the uh, previous page. And if some of you are watching closely, you may have noticed I made some mistakes when I was putting some of those values in for the aircraft. I had some wrong arms in there that I've since gone back and edited because I was looking at these numbers in the graph and things weren't looking right. So I have validated all these numbers with my own spreadsheet that I made up and the LX is giving me the same numbers as my spreadsheet. So I know I have things set up properly. Hopefully, You've learned something uh, new today, especially about doing weight and balance in your LX computer. There's a lot of information that needs to be put in. It needs to be double checked and triple checked to make sure you've done it accurately so that you can uh, go to this page before flight and get a quick look at what your actual CG position is for the flight. Please visit me online at www.fox1corp.com and uh, subscribe to my Fox1Corp YouTube channel.